Hello and welcome to short introductory video of the Halidon web client. Web client is reactive HTTP client and is brand new addition to the Halidon SE family since 2.0. In this video we will be using Halidon Quick Start SE project as a base of our example. To generate base project simply navigate yourself to Halidon IO page and select documentation for Halidon 2. Then uh, select guides under Halidon SE and select Halidon SE Quick Start. Copy this Maven archetype uh, string and generate the project via command line. Once you are done, open the newly generated project in your IDE. Once the generated project is opened in your IDE, open pomxml file and find dependency for Halidon web client and remove scope test since we do not want this dependency to in be included only in tests and now we are ready to actually create some example of the web client the first thing we need to do is to start quick start se example this example will serve us as a base for our web client requests and therefore it needs to be running before the actual testing of the web client. Uh, navigate yourself to the, to the sources and select main class. Execute this main class and wait for it to start up. Now we have uh, the web server running and we can just copy uh, the URL which it printed out at the end and this URL we will be using it to the actual testing and examples of the web client. When we have this URL copied we can actually start to create web client examples. To be able to do that we need to create a new class. So let's create a new class and call it, for example, client example. To be able to execute it, we also need to have a new main method here. And now uh, to be able to perform the actual request, we need to create web client instance itself. So as a type, we can choose web client, uh, some proper name, and now we have to create uh, an actual instance of the web client. The easiest way is to probably call the create method, but uh, for the sake of this example we will create a builder approach. So let's call builder.build and this is basically exactly the same stuff what uh, that create method would do. But here we can also configure the web client itself a bit. So let's take a look. And as you can see, there is a lot of different configuration options you can choose from. And in our example, the first configuration option which we will use is the base URI. So select it. And here we will paste the URI or URL which we have copied before. So just paste it here and it should look like this. And this is basically saying the web client that this URI is a place where to start every uh, request uh, which will be executed. Okay, so now we are ready to actually start creating the uh, requests to the, to the example. To have some better understanding of which endpoints are basically available to us in this Quick Start SE, we can take a look into the readme file here. And as you can see, there are some basic ones, so we can use those to execute requests to them uh, via web client. Let's say we will use, for example, this, this first one here, and we will execute get request to the following endpoint and will receive this response. So let's say, uh, let's, let's uh, head back to the client example class and say web client dot get since we do want to execute the actual get request. And now when you 
press dot you should see the following output basically there's there is a lot of different configurations you can choose from when you are executing the request and in our case we will use method request this method basically executes the requests and returns single of uh, the given type we want to be returned if we would do it like this, this would return the web client response. This basically contains uh, response code, um, uh, headers and unhandled uh, response entity. But if you want to, uh, if you do not want to handle the entity itself or better to say by yourself, you can just say that you want this to return some sp specific method. In my case I want to return string since I want to just print it out to the console and then uh, since it, wa it, it was uh, single I can just simply say peak and system out and print line. So basically this will print out uh, the handled response when it's received. Uh, sorry, response entity, I, I mean. And and there is also one thing we need to add here in our example, and that's uh, method await, since when we are running in the main method here, uh, without this method, it would just end the JVM and we would not receive uh, the response because the web client is reactive. So we do need to add this here basically to wait for the response itself so now we if we, if we will execute the main method you will see that we will receive the following message or the following entity and when you compare it to the message we have already received here you can see that this is the, exactly the same one as we should have received and now let's say we want to execute another request. So let's take a look into the readme and as you can see there, there is another one that's basically the same one as the first one with the slight modification that you can add a name uh, after the greet and this name then will be returned in entity of the response. So we can take a look if we can do the same here. So let's copy this and do the slight modification here and use a method path since that's basically extending the base URI here and adding some specific path there. So let's type slash David for example and when we execute it it returns exactly the same stuff instead of now uh, just having their world we have a David there which corresponds to the path we have set here. Now imagine the situation that you do not need only string. You want something more complex. You want some object to be returned. Because let's face it, string is not that commonly returned or that commonly handled. So you can just say, all right, I want this JSON here, which I am anyway receiving. I want this to be handled as JSON object. All right, so let's let's make it as a JSON object. If we will execute it now, we will receive this exception here. This basically uh, tells us that there is no reader for the type JSON object. All right, so now we need to register a support for JSON P project. So we can add. Uh, media support and that's JSON P support dot create and that's it this will basically register everything for us this will register readers and writers for uh, for JSON processing framework and the following uh, following re request now should proceed. So let's see. 
and as you can see I have received this, uh, the two messages as before when I had string here and now we can take a look into another method uh, where we'll be using put all right so how this put uh, method should look like uh, or this uh, execution should look like basically as you can see we can execute put and adding some uh, entity there and this will basically set a new greeting uh, of our service so when we execute this and right after that for example the same one as we did before we should receive the same message as before but with a different greeting this greeting should be exactly the same as the one we have included into the entity uh, to the res uh, to the uh, to the service all right so let's do that let's uh, go back to client example and uh, let's say we want to create a json object first because that's the entity we will be sending so json object and let's call it for example entity and let's create it so json.create object builder and let's call method at and greeting since it has to be the same format as here so greeting and some some value that's up to you so greeting we do have it here and now let's put here some some other greeting so for example hi and now let's go build all right so we have our uh, request entity ready and now just execute uh, the request with this entity so the client and we have said that we will be re uh, requesting put instead of get because we are sending something so let's execute put and we will execute it to the path uh, greeting so as you can see the base is the same in all the examples but uh, the path uh, after the base is uh, is different so greeting all right like this and now just call submit basically that's uh, that's also uh, executing the request uh, in our case it's submitting the request and we can say that we do want to uh, submit and some object which will be our entity so entity here and since we, since, since we have already registered media support before we do not need to add, uh, do it again so this this json object will be handled correctly and will be sent to the service and now we can just say that uh, when this is done we do want to execute another request so let's call then compose and now uh, here we will receive some response and uh, we actually do not mind that much about the response itself we just need to execute another request right after receiving the response from the previous one so when this response has been executed we do need to uh, sorry so this request has been executed we need to execute another request and that will be client get and basically we can copy exactly the same stuff which we have here and do it only like this right yeah all right so basically this executes another request another get request to the path 
David and it, it is returning a uh, handled response entity as a JSON object. And now we can just say then when this is done we also want to uh, want to print it out to the console and so we will write then accept this method from completion stage and then let's say system out print line as we have done this before and let's call await all right and when if we will execute this we should receive two messages as before and now as you can see we have executed the final uh, the, 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 the put request we have added entity with the new greeting and the new greeting should be there when we execute another get request to the endpoint and this is basically how you use web client to execute your request to some specific uh, endpoints